I'm John Park. I'm playing a video game that I control just by swinging my fists. The secret is in the controls. This is the Wii Remote, and this is the Wii Nunchuck. They both track my movements with a little sensor inside. How about we try it with another game? Let's check out baseball. The remote sends all the info about the motion of my arm and turns that into the speed of the ball. For makers, the Wii Nunchuck is great because we can read the data coming off of it and use it for all kinds of projects. Here's an example of some software I downloaded that measures all of the movements in each direction. So why not take this outside and bring it onto a ski slope or a roller coaster and measure the g-forces? Well, that's exactly what we're going to do. Today, we're going to build a personal flight recorder. Let's crack this thing open and see how it works. Remember the maker's bill of rights. If you can't open it, you don't own it. Now, the designers are trying to keep you out of this by using a weird kind of screw called a tri-wing. Luckily, you can pick up a tri-wing screwdriver online for just a couple of bucks. I'll pull the top off, and here's where all the action is. This little black chip on here is an accelerometer, and it measures your motion front to back, side to side, and up and down. All of that data travels down the wires, and you could remove the end and strip the wires to get at it, but there's a better solution. Here's a little adapter. It's called a Wii Chuck adapter. It slots into the end, and now I can get access to all the data on these little pins. So this will be the sensor for our flight data recorder. But what do I do with that data? I don't want to bring my laptop out onto the ski slope or a roller coaster. Well, the answer is a tiny little computer called a microcontroller board. This is one I love to work with. It's called the Arduino. The way it works, it takes input from things like buttons and knobs, processes that data, and then sends the output to things like lights and motors. Here's a simple example I've set up. I've got a little button box I built. When I press this button, it sends info to the Arduino, which then tells these LEDs the pattern to blink. Now, the benefit of these is that they're so small and they're inexpensive, around $35 for this one, and they do what you tell them to. So in our case, we're going to plug in our nunchuck controller to get the data. It's going to convert that raw data into G-force information, and then send that out to things like LCD panels, or even store that information in memory so we can look at it later. To make all this work, we have to program the Arduino and tell it what to do. Don't let the word programming scare you. Arduino comes with a very simple programming environment, and there are a lot of books and websites out there to help you learn. But to make this really simple, we've put this program up on the website so you can download it and use it in your project. Now, here's what I'll do. I'm going to plug in the USB cable from my computer to the Arduino. Go ahead and click the Upload button, which will send this software from the laptop onto the microcontroller. Once that's there, I need a way to see that data. So I'm going to use one of these. It's a little LCD screen. I just plug in these three cables. One of them is for 5 volts, the other is for ground, and the last one is the data pin. Now I can see the info coming off of the sensor into the microcontroller and onto the board. Now this all runs off of four AA batteries once I've taken it off the laptop, and now I need a case to put it in. I'll need my flight recorder to be able to take some abuse, so I'm going to put it all inside of a rugged case. I got one of these online for less than $20. It's hard plastic, and it's waterproof. Now, the first thing I'll do is cut a little window out of the front of it so that I can see my LCD screen when I mount it from the inside. And the best way to do that is with a rotary cutting tool. Here's how it all fits together. I've mounted my LCD on the inside of that window I cut. And if you were going to take this somewhere like white water rafting, you'd probably put a little piece of plexiglass and glue it in place so that it's still waterproof. Now, here's how it all fits together on the inside. I've mounted the Arduino to a battery pack with a zip tie. And this fits in really snugly in here thanks to the rubber interior. So that's not going anywhere. 
Now the nunchuck is attached to the Arduino. I've got my battery pack running through a little switch so I can turn this on and off. And I even put a little protective guard there so I won't accidentally bump that. And I also cut a little notch into the corner of the case there so that the wire of the nunchuck will fit through. Case down. This is my favorite part. I got this great hose clamp that the nunchuck slides into. And now I just need to screw that down and I'm all set. All right, it's all finished and it came out awesome. I added this strap here so that I can hang on to it. And when I flip the switch, it turns the screen on and starts reading out the G-forces. I'm going to jump. And when I land, push this joystick and see the maximum readout. I got 1.9 Gs on landing. I think it's time to take this and test it out. I'm here at the Mall of America. I've got my flight box, and I'm ready to test it out on a roller coaster. So we're already pulling a few extra Gs going up the hill. And here we go into the first big turn. Oh, that's great. I think we got 0.4 Gs going sideways in one direction and negative one. We've already pulled two Gs. All right, coming over some of those big hills, we've gone halfway towards weightless. So one is Earth gravity. We did half a G going down over those big hills, which is pretty cool. This works great. I'm John Park, and I'll see you next time on the Maker Workshop. Woo! Major funding for Make is provided by Geek Squad.